Hello, guys and gals, and welcome back to another episode of Haunted Gaming. This time, we have a uh, January 2014's Creep Pass of the Month, as decided on the Some Ordinary Gamers Wiki, uh, Nightmares in Dream World, which is a Pokemon Black and White 2 Creep Pasta. Um, I know, I know, Pokemon Creep Pastas, Poke Pastas, we have a lot of uh, high expectations, but this is this is uh, this was voted for a reason, I assume. And uh, uh, like I said, this creep pass is going to be in a section. It's sectioned in uh, its actual writing, so I'm going to section off the video as when we go into chapters. So just watch out for that. That being said, let's dive right into Nightmares and Dream World. So let's go. Our world is home to many. Most of it, he won't let us show. In your eyes, everything is fine. You're just sleeping. None of it's real. But in reality, it is. This is our tomb. This is where we rest. You will never know of the tortures we go through, the images we see. Only an unlucky few he wants to toy with. He wants a scar. We await for your arrival, hero. The one who may free us, or be trapped like the ones before. Your test is now. I awoke and eased. Could it have been true? This is the third time this week I've had the same dream. I have to go see Fennel in Stridane City. She will know what to do. I mean, she's the one who brought me for the here for the first time. I have to know what's been going on. I headed to the city in my bike, pedaling as fast as I could. Then, I saw her house. Quickly, I got off my bike and banged on her door. She answered right after, uh, Hilbert, what's wrong? Why do you look so pale? What happened? Fennel, the, the, the dreams. I keep having those damn dreams. The ones with the Pikachu? Yes, Fennel! Please make him stop. I'm sorry, Hilbert, she said hopelessly. There's nothing I can do. I told you there'd be side effects. Fennel, please, I beg of you. I need help. She's inside. There's only one thing I can do. I can run some tests, but you'll have to go back. Go back? I was petrified of the thought. But I couldn't deal with these dreams anymore. I had to stop this. Okay, I'll go back. Great, you know where to go, right, Hilbert? Yeah, Fennel. I walked into her home, heading upstairs into her lap. Her woman was staring at me as I approached the seat I had been in on my previous visit and sat down. She then came in with what looked like a gas mask, but in front of it was a vial of pink mist. She then placed a mask on my face and told me to relax. Now, Hilbert, I want you to inhale deeply, then count to four. I nodded, then inhaled. Breathing in, the pink smoke entered my lung. It was cold, but felt relaxing as I began to count. When reaching four, I dozed off, looking at Fennel's expression as she grinned at me. I awoke on the floor of what looked like a forest. I could feel the moist grass between my fingertips. I always felt so weird, so real, whenever I came here. I stood up, picking up my bag, which was on the floor right next to me. Searching it, I found only two dream balls and a flashlight. I turned the flashlight on as it began to darken. Walking along the forest, I began to hear noises. It sounded like the uh, chatter of children. One of the voices spoke, mocking me as the other voices laughed. Oh look, the heroes returned. We're all saved. Shut up, I said. Irritated as the voices stopped and it grew silent. The only thing that was heard was my, were my footsteps as I walked. I began to see something in the distance. I couldn't really tell what it was, but as I grew close, I began to feel unnerved. I wanted to stop and run away, but I couldn't. I was scared. My curiosity wouldn't let me leave. I kept walking towards the unknown figure. Its eye opened. I now knew what it was. It was a creature that haunted my dreams. It was that Pikachu. I could now see its decaying green body as it walked towards me. She's lying to you. The truth lies near the yard, where they tested. Go there now before his hand takes hold of you, and hope is lost forever. Go. It screeched loudly as I fell to the ground, my eyes closing as I clenched my ears. Then, I awoke. I stood up in distress, breathing heavily as I took off my mask. Hilbert, it's okay. Fennel then hugged me. I started to calm down, looking at her. I blushed. I'm fine, Fennel. Thank you, I said sincerely. You sure, Hilbert? Do you want to stay over for the night? I stared at her, trying to see what the Pikachu saw in her. She didn't seem evil in any way, if anything, the complete opposite. She's always been so nice to me, helping me with my dreams, and my train of thought was cut off as Fennel kissed me. Answering her own question, we continued to kiss more as we had to 
her bedroom. I awoke the next morning with a headache. Looking beside me, I saw Fennel sleeping peacefully. I slowly arose from the bed, getting dressed, her eyes beginning to open tired as she groaned. Where are you going, Herbert? I smiled. Oh, it's nothing, Fennel. I'm just heading into town to get some groceries. Hmm, Braxton, bed sounds so good. I kissed her forehead as I headed out to the door. Be back soon. I never lied to Fennel before, but I wanted to see what was in that dream yard. They should buy me some time to search the place. I sat on my bike, put my helmet on, and rode all the way to the grassy field. I was welcomed to the site of the old broken down lab in which Fennel had worked before. I chained up my bike, then walked outside. The building was in a horrible state. Sections collapsed, vegetation everywhere, and papers all over the floor. I looked around checking the paperwork, looking through rooms that weren't destroyed but nothing. I continued my search until I saw some street cones and some evidence tape. They had been here a while, I could tell, and past them was a basement nailed shut from the outside. Analyzing its state and how long it's been there, I was thinking on breaking it open. I walked out looking for something to do the job, and then I saw a metal pipe. I grabbed it and headed back to the basement. I swung the pipe at the wooden basement door and managed to break a hole in it. Again, I swung, making this hole big enough for me to fit through. I went inside, it was pitch black and the place smelled like rotten food and death. I almost gagged at the smell, holding my shirt up to my nose with one hand and getting my flashlight with another. I turned it on and began to explore. It looked like an old lab facility. There was broken vials, test tubes, and old machines. Some looked, some, some looked, you know, functional. It soon came to my realization that there were manas down here. They stared at me as I walked and approached a room more down the hall. This one looked like the main area where people would come and discuss results. There was a big round table in the center with a broken machine on it. Desks across the walls, and there's what looked like a control station with a huge monitor above it. I saw a big red button with some vegetation around it that read power. Pressing it turned the power of the whole lab and the monitor in front of me and the monitor in front of me came alive. I looked at it, scrolling through the files, then ran across a folder called Video Logs. I opened it and saw a whole list full of videos. Curious. I checked the first one and started playing. Video log number one. Hello. The picture shows Fennel. All happy and cheerful, smiling at the camera with two other scientists behind her unpacking. Well, this is our first login in our new lab. We are so grateful that Plasma Corp decided to finance our results, studies on uh, Manas and Musharnas in this area. We have to make great progress in discovering the nature of these Pokemon. Well, we have some more unpacking to do, so see you soon. She giggles and presses a button that ends the video. Video log number six. Finally, we are done unpacking and ready to settle in. I can't wait to start research. I already caught my own Muna. She giggles, hugging it. Muna. It smiles happily as Fennel ends the logs. Video log number 12. This time, one of the other scientists appeared on the log, who named himself Theodore Bain. This one had long gray hair and a five o'clock shadow, that looked like, and he looked in his 30s. We've had a lot of progress since our last log. We have discovered that the Munas and Musharnas expel a pink mist that has been able to capture some thanks to Fennel's Muna for testing. I wonder what, we will, uh, what our findings will be once our study is done, and it's the log. Video log number 15. We finally got all the results from the pink mist that we discovered. Fennel has named it Dream Mist, because some of the properties make Pokemon fall asleep when exposed. We still haven't done any trials on humans, because Randolph insists that we study it more before exposure. Anyways, the mist seems to originate from an organ in Munas and Musharnas, which is needed for normal blood flow, resulting in it being uh, expelled. The chemicals in it give off a sweet aroma, which if absorbed through a po uh, Pokemon's pores, causes it to feel drowsy and pass out. With this discovery, maybe we can use it to make a drug for patients that suffer from sleep disorders. Ends the log. Video log number 17. Fennel appears on this one, discussing the progress as the other two scientists are in the uh, background working on a machine. We are certain we can extract the chemical used in the sleeping process. As we speak, Randolph and Theodore are using the mass extractor behind me to get the chemical that causes drowsiness out of the mist, and able to use for testing. She smiles about to uh, she, smi she smiles about to end the log, but the capsule holding the mist behind her breaks. Oh God! She turns her head as Randolph and Theodore begin to choke on the mist falling on the floor. She herself starts choking on it. Looking now at the screen falling on the floor, they all lay there as to what seems to be their death, but three more minutes into the video they gasp for air. Fennel gets up emotionless and ends the log. Video log number 18. Randolph is now on screen. He looks in his mid-twenties and has crisp, short red hair and glasses. It's been almost a day since exposure to the Dreamus and everything seems to be fine. Except after the event. We all discuss what happened and discover that... We all, uh, had a strange... the same strange dream. 
Waking up near a huge tree in a dense forest alone until we saw a Pikachu. There's nothing wrong with the Pikachu. Looked at us, smiled, and then ran away. Fennel is running tests on Theodore in the other room, exposing him to the mist once again to see what occurs. I'll be heading there shortly to see the results. Ends the log. Video log number 19. The log is later that same day. Fennel is shown this time. Oh dear, the tests on Theodore's didn't end well. He woke up screaming. He told us that, uh, what we were doing is opening a world that shouldn't be messed with and should end the study. He's wrong, though. We've discovered a new world, a world that can only be reached in our dream. We must conduct more studies. I have a feeling we're getting somewhere. End the log. Video log number 21. I've invented a device that can be used to capture Pokemon in the dream world. Fennel looks excited with her news. Uh, I call it a dream ball. She shows it to the camera. Using the mass extractor, we can turn the dream ball into a mist and mix it with the original so when inhaled, it will transfer into the dream world as we venture inside it. Randolph agreed to test it later today. Wish us luck. She smiles happily, ending the log. Video log number 22. The test was a big success. He was able to use the dream ball while he was in the world. She shows the Pokeball and look what I got. She opens the Pokeball and a Pikachu came out. Isn't he adorable? She pets the Pikachu. I also believe this is the same one we saw in our first encounter too. And so log. We sent Randolph into the world again. When he came back he didn't look well. He looked distant. Maybe the mist had some side effects. Theodore isn't acting well too. He says he has been uh, having nightmares recently. I hope they're okay. And so log. Video log number 26. We've been studying Randolph to see what he has uh, been up, uh, what has been up with him, but he doesn't respond to any of our means of communications. He just stares at us. It's as if he's not even there anymore. The good news is Theodore's nightmares have dimmed down. It must have been too much exposure to the mist that caused it. Log ends. Video log number 28. This time, it was Theodore and Fennel on screen. Theodore speaking first. Randolph finally spoke after four days, but his response was, well, unnerving. Fennel then continued. He told us he didn't know who we were talking about and asked where he was. We both believe that he is suffering from amnesia, probably due to the uh, another side effect of the mist. He then started to panic. We held him down trying to calm him, but all he kept saying was, he's coming for us. He won't stop until he has us all. We asked who he could be, and he responded with, he has no name. Randolph then continued to become more hostile, resulting in Theodore getting cut with a scalpel on his shoulder. We needed to calm him down before he harmed us anymore, so Theodore held him as I went to get a vial of dream mist from the experiment room and placed it in a needle. We don't want to use the mist on him, but we had no other means of sedating him. I then went to treat Randolph with it, and he grew even more hostile, grabbing Theodore by the neck as he held him down. He kept screaming, saying, no, I won't go back there. Please don't make me go back there. I finally was able to inject him, causing him to gradually calm down and pass out. Theodore sighed. It's been a long day, I'm tired. Let's just end the log here. Okay. Fennel then ends the log. Video log number 29. Today's been better. Randolph hasn't woken yet since the incident last night, but his readings are normal. Theodore just went into town to gather more supplies, leaving me alone to watch over him. I hope he's okay. Ends the log. Video log number 30. Fennel is on screen looking very distressed. I don't know where he went. He was just in his bed a minute ago. I already called Theodore to get back quick. I hope Randolph hasn't left the facility. I'm going now to continue my research. She goes to end the log but is grabbed from behind. No! Get off of me! Let me go! Randolph places a gas mask on her face containing a vial of mist as he forces her to inhale the fumes and passes out. She drops to the floor. Randolph leaves and Theodore enters the room five minutes later running to Fennel. My god, Fennel! He holds her in his arms. As she regains consciousness, and smiles at him. Thought you were dead. He blushes as he puts her hand on his face. Fennel. She snaps his neck without any hesitation getting up and ending the log. Video log number 31. The room is empty and then Pikachu runs in scared trying to hide. Randolph walks in a few minutes later and approaches a defenseless Pikachu. Pika! It smiles loudly as Randolph grabs his head and slams it against the wall repeatedly until it stops moving and walks out with the Pikachu in one hand and the scalp in the other and heads to another room. Log ends. Video log number 32. Fennel waves at the screen with a huge disturbing grin. Police, if there's anyone in there, please speak now. She blinks like a trance was lifted off of her. Help! Help! He's right over here! Randolph walks into the room, in the previous video, whipping blood off his hands. Hold it right there! He starts to walk towards with the... with them the... then with the scalpel. Then there was a large bang and he drops to the floor. Fennel looking back at the screen, smiling. Pressing the power button, ending the last log. I looked at the monitor in shock. The Pikachu is right. Fennel is evil. She killed them. The mist. This is what 
she's been doing to me. She has been helping me with my dream. She's been trying to make me turn into one of those things. Like her. I have to get out of here. I have to call the pol- Turn around quickly. I felt a large pain in my chest as I looked down at it. A large needle was lobbed into my abdomen. Within it a vial of dream mist. No. No. Looking forward, I was met with her eyes. Hilbert, Hilbert, Hilbert. I really thought I could trust you. <coughs> I coughed up a little blood as Fennel injected me with it, grinning as she did in the video. I'll forgive you, though. You always forgive the ones you love. She smirks as she finishes injecting me. Get away from me. She giggled as I fell to the floor and passed out. Is this a place? A kid knocks on the door of the house. The door opens and a lady with long, dark blue hair and blue eyes answered. Hello? Oh, hello. I was sent here by uh, Miss Jupiter to talk to a uh, Fennel? Oh, yes, she giggled. You must be Nate. I'm Fennel. As they talked, a man went and hugged Fennel from behind. She blushes. Oh, this is my husband, Hilbert. She smiled as she kissed her on the... As he, as he kisses her on the cheek. Hilbert, can you be nice and take our guest bags inside? Yes, dear, he smirks, taking his bags and heading inside. Come in, Nate. We have much to discuss. He walks into the house as Fennel closes the door behind him grinning deviously. So, what do we think of this creepypasta? Well, first, love scene in a creepypasta definitely goes to uh, Nightmare and Dream World. Once again, our January 2014th creepypasta of the month. And shows that I just need to bring more people in to uh, do some intense voice acting with me uh, when we get one of these dialogue heavy creepypastas, huh? Anyways, another thing for a different time. So, what do I think about this? It's, it's pretty nice. Now, we have to fill in some information from the game in case people didn't know, so this might, you know, get into spoiler territory, so just cover your ears in case, you know, it's about to get spoilery. So, in Black and White 2, Nate, the uh, character of the creepypasta, is a canonical protagonist, uh, which shows up at the end in, you know, Black and White 2, that is Nate in this creepypasta, he is the canonical protagonist of Black and White 2. Our creepypasta protagonist, Hilbert, is actually the canonical pro uh, protagonist of the original Pokemon Black and White. Fennel is our dream scientist who we encounter in the second game and so forth, and, you know, all the items pertain to that series of uh, Pokemon games, so, you know, I'm just filling you guys in there. But now, I said one thing in the past, and why I mentioned this too, why I mentioned these protagonists here, is that for a good creepypasta, specifically gaming creepypasta, because remember, creepypastas, we've only done like 15% of these like, total creepypastas, like, not even, like, 10%, and just, just in, like, the gaming section. You know, you go beyond in other creepypastas, like, real-life-based ones, you get a whole different set of rules that you gotta judge those by and look at them and analyze them with, you know, and, like, see what they're all about. But a gaming one, you know, at least in my eyes, after, you know, reading so many of them, requires exploiting something in the game already that has been existing. Now, in this case, we have Dream Scientist Fennel, and, you know, by simply ricocheting ideas and pretty much creating this sub-story for her, because like I said, it is interesting, a dream scientist, you get a very unnerving creepypasta, because as you expand and you discover more, and as you make more ideas, as your brain starts rattling these things, you end up making, you know, pretty much internet gold. You begin to see through the eyes of Hilbert, and the audio log get creepier and creepier. The imagery is brilliant. For example, I could picture the Pikachu getting, you know, hit against the table. I know it's a morbid thought, and it's not exactly, you know, something you should be thinking about. Pikachus are cute, but it works quite well. You know, the locks kept building up, and uh, you wanted to see it go on and on like it's a good show. In fact, you know, this creepypasta also has some real-life sort of uh, screenshots. And I don't know if these are faked or not, but this is, like, apparently to the author, this is, like, after doing this creepypasta, this is the dialogue that occurred in the game, which is pretty creepy to think about. You know, simply, it just, it, it gives you, you know, when you, when you look at it, it's a very nice creepypasta. It doesn't have to resort to demons or decapitations to reach its effect. It simply gives you something in the game to think about. And I mean, the next time players of Pokemon, avid players, see Fennel, they might just have things in mind that they, didn't, minds that they didn't. This might unnerve, which, if it did, it serves its purpose quite well. Now, in the end, I thought it was well-deserving of the award, and it was structured quite nice. I was interested with the concepts of the dreams, which I might add in the sci-fi world of Pokemon, Almost anything convoluted, whether it be in fan fiction or even just in the games, can occur. So in the end, I gotta say, this creepypasta really does get to me on gaming. And Pokemon gaming creepypasta is like cat videos on YouTube on this website right here. So when you find a good one, it's it's actually a really good one. So that's something I gotta give it to. So what would you rate this and what would you change to make it better? This has been another episode of Haunted Gaming. And if you like what you saw, then like, comment, and subscribe. This is me, Mudahar, and uh, I'm out.